Thank you. Well, I hate to uh, stop you in mid-flow, but we do uh, need some questions or we need to leave time for questions. Now, there are a couple of people who would like to make statements, but I'm going to have questions first, and then if we have time, I'll ask uh, one or two people to come to the mic. Uh, so working press first, which is the table in front of me. If anybody has a question, could you uh, indicate, please? <coughs> Hi. Um, is that on? Um, Andy Sharp for the Nikkei Asian Review. Um, two questions. When was the last time you were in Burma and what kind of reception did you get there? And secondly, which is a bigger question, of course, it's um, what kind of international pressure would it take to persuade the Burmese military, the Aung San Suu Kyi government to stop this genocide and try to put things right? Um, maybe thirdly as well, if, if you don't mind, sorry to ask another question, but what about all the Rohingya now in, in Bangladesh? Do they have any hope of coming home or do you expect them to build new lives for themselves in Bangladesh? I'm uh, sorry, the last question please. I just like sorry, do you expect the Rohingya in Bangladesh now to stay there and build their own new lives there? Okay, okay the first question, um, I was in Burma uh, in 2005, 2006, when I ended my exile in the U.S. as a political refugee and pick up my uh, Burmese citizenship, uh, I was there as a guest of the state. And then these are my hosts. Uh, the, the one on my right is currently vice president who chaired the internal inquiry commission that exonerated the Burmese armed forces of um, you know, any wrongdoing. And then the tall man is now uh, number three in the Burmese army. He's my contemporary. Uh, uh, he is the um, chief of general staff. He is a shoe in for number one position. He's uh, about 56 years old. Um, so the, uh, I was an activist for 15 years. I supported Aung San Suu Kyi as a grassroots activist. I was leading the consumer boycott in the United States as a student activist. And then when I, when I decided that Aung San Suu Kyi showed absolutely no leadership, yeah, something that I have been uh, indicated fully. She has shown absolutely no leadership, N moral, political, intellectual, strategic. The Aung San Suu Kyi, from a, le a leadership perspective, is a total catastrophe. Uh, so when I uh, reached a conclusion as early as 2004, uh, the Korean National Union uh, leader, General Bumya, and myself, we were looking for American support. I was author, uh, asked by the, um, the KNU and the Allied Armed Ethnic Organization that's along the Burmese uh, Thai border to look for basically arms and other support from the United States and other countries. And when I discovered that Washington wasn't serious about democracy when it bogged a democracy. So I felt uh, that we were approached at the same time by the Burmese military intelligence at the time, General Kenyon to work with us, uh, to work with them, because they said we are afraid of China. We don't want to be pushed into China's pocket. And so out of these three factors, the military is the overture to the overseas dissidents, and, and uh, my own personal conclusion that Suu Kyi is utterly uh, failed. And then thirdly, uh, the, um, uh, the, there, there are no alternatives to do like arm rise, uprising. And so I decided to went back to Burma, attempting to work with the uh, Burmese military leadership. I was engaged in what is known as Track 2, setting up meetings with the uh, Burmese uh, military representatives and international labor organization, British government, French corporations, German foundations in, in Europe. And so I was their boy the, yeah, in Europe. But w and and I, w I had my own agenda. I allowed them to use me, and I wanted them to move on the reform platform as th they say they would. So I propose that they reconcile with the student leadership if they don't want to ha deal with Suchi. And then uh, I ask them to invite the Burmese economists from abroad home to advise them on economic reform. And then thirdly, I said, can you make the internet available uh, for the Burmese? At the time, like internet was like a $200 per SIM card. Yeah, and uh, say, look, uh, we are under, we are destroying our new generation, and others around Asia are uh, having access to uh, high-speed internet and and learning about the world. And then they did nothing. And, and on top of that, they started shooting monks, and I cut my tie, and then um, I became an uh, enemy of the state. And so uh, in terms of the pressure, I think there has to be some kind of international intervention. I don't mean that uh, Japan sent its defense force and bombed a Nepi doll, or like a kidnapped me online from uh, wherever. 
And that's not what I mean. There are different types of intervention. If anyone who has uh, involved in any type of uh, uh, diplomacy and strategizing to deal with these issues, there are so many forms of in, uh, intervention. What, say, for instance, Japan can like simply say that we are going to have uh, a policy review in the face of a relentless call for uh, ICC referral and, and in the face of the, the, the impossibility of the... Um, uh, the Security Council. Essentially, for all intents and purposes, Security Council is in a in a coma. It cannot. It has not shown any capacity to address any large scale uh, sufferings, whether in Yemen, Syria, or Iraq or Afghanistan, and now in genocide in Burma. So, in that case, the individual nations that have signed the Genocide Convention, that have signed on to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, they need to f call a uh, uh, emergency meeting somewhere, like the Tokyo summit, you know, Kuala Lumpur summit. Recently at the Council on Foreign Relations in New York, Mahathir, uh, you know, Dr. Mahathir, the second, uh, the, the, the reformist prime minister now, I understand like he was an autocrat before, but at the age of like 94, the, the Mahathir has been extremely, you know, progressive, I must say. He's even the, the head of state saying that maybe, you know, we will need military action. This is Mahathir, not a leftist, like a radical activist. Yeah, we need to take Mahathir's word seriously. If we are not prepared to go all the way as Mahathir suggested, at least you know Japan should say, "Look, you know we founded your armed forces, and now you are behaving like uh, the fascists in the 1930s and 40s, and uh, we cannot allow that to happen. Therefore, we will cut all, or like we will put a moratorium, moratorium." on like a foreign investment moratorium on the development aid uh, you know there will, there should be no aid going to burma except emergency relief aid and a medicine and humanitarian assistance that's one country alone can do a lot there are about you know uh, I can put together 12 different names of governments that will be prepared to follow Japan's lead. If Japan comes, Japan is the 10th largest investor in Burma. Yeah? Japan must not be, you know, seen or be recorded again in history as a war crime collaborator. Thank you. And there was another question. Uh, the Rohingya in, in Bangladesh. I'm oh, sorry. Think? Yeah. The, the, should, should they go back? Yes. Can they go back? Can the can can the uh, can the uh, can the Jews who survived, uh, you know, uh, the twenty plus uh, uh, forced and death camps, uh, should they go back or should they go to the Middle East and uh, the West should help them uh, uh, find, uh, you know, the uh, um, is Israel? I mean, that's the same question. Well, I mean. Uh, ask yourself, like you know, if your fam, if you saw your your wife raped and uh, your father, uh, you know, shot dead in front of your eyes, uh, just only a year ago, and or you know, if if your little uh, six months old boy was burned alive in front of your eyes while your wife was raped and her breast cut off after the gang rape. Would you like to be told that, you know, like uh, you need to go back and that the Burmese, that this is like, you know, telling the uh, Holocaust survivors, you know, like uh, Auschwitz is, is uh, you know, uh, has a new paint, <laughs> go back, you know. I mean, this is utterly pathetic and disgusting coming from diplomats and policy advisors and world leaders. Go back. It's like no one would tell the Jews and Romers and others who survived uh, uh, the, the, the guest chambers and, you know, uh, 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 the labor camps. Would you like to go back to, uh, to Germany? I mean, look at the population of Jewish uh, people in Germany today. Compare that in 1930s and 40s. Where are the Jews today? Where are the people who survived the uh, Holocaust? Where are them? I mean, where are they majority? They're outside Germany. Yeah, what's so wrong with like a Rohingya needing international protection? Rohingyas are not demanding that they want an independence, independent republic of like is you know Muslim Rohingyas. They said we want to live with you, but we are in a situation where all pillars of Burmese society, the generals, the monks, the suci, the intellectuals, the public, the farmers, fishermen, and rickshaw drivers and street vendors don't want uh, don't want us there. They don't even consider us uh, a part of them. And we have harbored no hatred towards you. And we are only like, you know, one million plus Muslims. We don't pose any threat. You are 50 million Buddhists. Yeah. 
And so like, you know, this is, like, I mean, blatant. This is going to go down in history. And everyone's going to remember what happened in, in these years. And many of, many of the Japanese corporations and Japanese politicians will find themselves again in the bad spot of history. Thank you. I'd like to tell uh, a few things uh, about uh, the relations of the problem. So, uh, sorry, Japan. Professor, just tell us who you are, would you, if you don't uh, mind. My name is Michimi Muranoshi. I'm a professor teaching international politics in the Department of Law uh, at Gakushu University. Uh, I think, first, uh, the, the Japanese government still refuses to use the term Rohingya. Uh, according to the request, of the uh, government of Myanmar. Uh, but uh, the United States, as you know, uses the term Rohingya. And uh, the Japanese is a government, uh, the Japanese government often defends that the United States and Japan uh, share common values. Second, uh, after August 25th last year, the Japanese government express, expressed its deep condolence for the people the security people killed by the ARSA uh, in the August 25th uh, uh, um, so-called attack. However, the Japanese government, after the news, overwhelming news, that uh, one uh, tens of southern people uh, were killed by uh, the government forces, security forces, uh, those, for those killed Rohingyas, the Japanese government are yet to express any condolence. When I asked one of the government officials about what is the difference between the two things, he told me that uh, on the first, the ARSA has recognized, but for the latter, it is still not confirmed. So, uh, despite the fact that there are photos, uh, there are uh, UN reports and other kinds of reports attesting that uh, atrocities have been committed, the Japanese have very unbalanced attitude to the two kinds of victims. Uh, third, uh, I think uh, there are, uh, there are huge interest of Japanese economy uh, in Burma. When I checked the, the names of the companies that are donating money to the LDP and uh, the companies who are doing business, especially in the Tirawa area of Myanmar, the names of the companies are almost the same. Uh, and uh, lately, uh, in advisory from the advisory board, uh, the former U, uh, U.S. ambassador to the Uni uh, United Nations, uh, Mr. Richardson, resigned from the advisory board, uh, saying that this is a committee uh, in order to whitewash the atrocities. And lately, uh, a new, uh, another kind of committee in order to uh, investigate what happened was made. And uh, one of the Japanese, who is a former uh, Japanese ambassador to the United Nations, uh, was named. And he has started working. So uh, if you compare the two things, that uh, what is now uh, built, uh, made as a new committee, has the same kind of purpose uh, as the last one, but the Japanese government is willing to participate in the process whose only purpose seems to be to whitewash or the, uh, what is alleged. Uh, according to them, what is alleged by the international community. So, uh, in the area of foreign policy, uh, I think uh, there is, in my view, not much democracy in Japan. In elections, 
not many people hear about it. In the press, not many people read about it. And uh, lately, people know that there is a huge refugee community in Bangladesh. But other than that, uh, they don't know that the refugee community is only a part of the problem. As Mr. Zani said, uh, it is genocide, and uh, it is needs to be reported uh, that the fact the real problem is much more bigger than just returning those refugees to Myanmar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, just on that subject, uh, Zani-san, have you had much interest in the Japanese media? Um, we have had um, uh, Newsweek, NHK, um, uh, Japanese uh, taken an interest, and um, also there are a lot of uh, well-meaning uh, the Japanese uh, researchers uh, working on international development, humanitarian relief, NGO, but I think like they, they need to press the, uh, uh, their own ministries, uh, the bureaucrats, the politicians, that um, Japan cannot be so out of line uh, from the uh, from the reality, you know, this isn't simply uh, protesters being shot dead when the regime feels threatened. This is a case where a, a community is held guilty simply because of their identity, simply because of the uh, uh, the, uh, the framing of the military as a, a foreign a potential foreign a proxy. So, the, you know, the, the, the Rohingyas are guilty because they exist. In that scenario, reconciliation between the Burmese society, the, the military political class and intellectual class, and uh, um, the, the Rohingyas are not possible. There is no conflict. If, if there's only one thing that, uh, that, that you would remember from this talk, just bear in mind, genocides are not conflict. Genocides are state-directed, coordinated, systematic, uh, and sustained process to destroy a national minority that has a racial, ethnic, religious, and national identity. Yeah. Rohingyas are considered a protected group under international law. And Burma signed the, uh, uh, the Convention on the Genes uh, Prevention and Punishment of the Genocide on the, uh, you know, in 1956, there are almost 150 nations, including uh, Japan, that have signed and ratified this interstate treaty. And this is customary law. You know, it, uh, the intervening in genocide is as customary as the Japanese bowing before, you know, like a leaving or greeting each other. And, and, and Japan, as a leading member of this uh, a world community, is failing to provide intellectual, moral, and political leadership. If Japan wants to compete with uh, China to try to uh, keep its influence in Burma, Japan, let me tell you for the record, Japan will lose. Not because China is bigger and more intelligent or big. Uh, geographically, Japan cannot win in this game. So why waste your um, soft cultural ca capital? Uh, the you know the, all over Asia, we know that you know Japan, a lot of like educated, balanced, open-minded Japanese know the atrocity that took place during the war times. But none of us in Asia um, has lost our affection and admiration for Japanese culture, society, uh, you know, the, the, the ability to rise out of the ashes of the, uh, the defeat. And we expect Japan to, you know, to do better. And Japanese leaders are underselling uh, Japan's influence, Japan's power, and giving simply money is not the way to spread Japanese influence. There is a genocide in Japan's backyard. You know, like when there was a backyard in European, uh, uh, Je Europe's uh, backyard in Bosnia in 1994. NATO got its act together. NATO did not wait for a Security Council consensus. Yeah, when there was a genocide in 1971 in East Pakistan, India intervened. When there was a genocide next to Vietnam, Vietnam intervened and overthrew Khmer Rouge in 19, I believe, like 78 or around that time. So this is Japan's calling. 
And Japan must not sink to the level of Beijing, run by a communist party, neo-totalitarian, about to commit a genocide against a, a Uyghur Muslim people in East uh, Turkestan or Shenzhen. And so I think Japan has to step up to the plate as a society, as a government, as an economic class. This is genocide. This is not shop lifting. This isn't simply two fights, two sides, you know, fighting each other. There is no conflict in so far as the Rohingya. I have known no other ethnic community from Burma who have expressed love and belonging and a sense of belonging to Burma. They are not demanding anything that we would not demand. I've interviewed, uh, you know, scores of Rohingya men and women. Think about it. Suchi was here in Tokyo, uh, walking on a, a red carpet, telling 300 plus uh, uh, Japanese businesses to come and business in her country, in her country, business as usual. Her her government is genocide uh, uh, business friendly and hostile to any one of us, anyone, including the United Nations. I mean, like, look, Japan can do so many things. There are 400 villages burned to the ground and being bulldozed, being primed for real estate and commercial establishment. Japan can stop, put a stop to it. Japan is a major player in UNESCO. Japan can propose that these 400 villages must be declared World Heritage Site. The same way, uh, you know, killing fields of uh, Cambodia, there are about 160 killing fields. And then all the concentration camps in in, in Germany, you know, Dachau, uh, the, um, the Session, Sessionhausen, uh, you know, the, um, um, and then and, and other places I've been to. I study under the American interrogator of German SS. My professor at the University of Wisconsin, my thesis advisor, was a young German American military police, fluent in German and English, and he interrogated German SS officers for the Nuremberg trial, uh, Tribunal. That's why I know genocide when I see one. I spent six years studying Nazi atrocities and fascism. And my country is, is in the stage where Munich was in 1930s. The police, folks, this isn't simply about news reporting. We have a genocide. For the first time in the social media, you see genocide on your Facebook, on your mobile devices. This is an affront to everybody. Journalists are first and foremost human beings. We must band together when a group of human beings are, are, are no fault of their own, being exterminated.